What's up, my people? This is Watson Simonis in the house. So hot and trendy. We've got the world turned in on their digital devices, cell phone, computer, tablets. Listening to my Piper Radio show. I'm about to drop a beat. I wanna give you two songs to download for free. So subscribe to WatsonSimonis.com. I'm subscribed right now. And don't forget the Facebook group and the team musician. All your artists better join in. We're gonna start this show. So sit back, relax, beat up, a sip, drink, and you're listening to the West. And Simone show on Pirate Radio. This is Weston Simonis, and we have Rick Barker. Good to meet you guys. All right, so we're down here at the NAM show. Now, we were talking about Nashville earlier yeah. about people wanting to come here and they, and they think that in the next minute they're going to be famous. Sure. This happens daily, right? Oh, no, every day. I mean, every day a star is born here in Nashville. Yeah. Uh, no, it actually, Nashville, like Chicago, like New York, uh, Austin, uh, Los Angeles, they're very humbling towns because there's there's a lot of people all trying to achieve the same thing uh, or what it is they think they need to achieve, which is that, you know, elusive record deal or publishing deal or whatever the case may be. And, what it is is that there's just unfortunately not enough for everybody to go around. So when people come here trying to stick out, uh, this is a place you should come to network, hone your craft. You know, there's plenty of places that you can sing and, you know, you get a $40 base paid for the whole entire band and you split the tips for a four hour ship. You know? And I'm like, okay, some people are like, wait a minute, $40. What if there's four people in the band? Great, you all made ten dollars, so somebody better know how to work the tip bucket, uh, which they do as well. But you know, there's lots of opportunities. Like I said, when you come here to write with better players, sing with better singers, um, play with better musicians. You know, it's a very humbling town, but it's a great town for I feel personal growth, and that's why you're coming here. I I totally agree. Cause last time when I went and checked out. Everything. You were down on Broadway? Yeah, on Broadway. <laughs> it was pretty gnarly. Did you see like, all the bachelorette parties on the pedal taverns? I, you know, I don't think I, I got to see any of those last okay. night. Well, Thursday night. So it was that's okay. They they're, said it was a slow night. Well, they're out there, and uh, CMT is even doing a, a whole TV show on bachelorette parties. We're second to Vegas now. So. Oh. Yeah, there you have. Wow. So what do you think of the NAMM show? Have you got around and seen anything? Man, it's very I, cool that oh, your yeah. sponsor sent you out here. That's right. Direct Music Source sent yeah. me out here, paid for the whole flight, paid for the hotel. Right. And uh, um, it was a pretty awesome deal. Now tell me a little bit about them. So they're a full-line music shop, okay. and, and what they're doing is they're expanding their store, and they want to bring in more music product, All right. uh, be able to have, you know, little things in there like a coffee shop in their store uh, they get guitar lessons vocal oh, wow lessons. okay they want to do vocal lessons they want to have piano and they have violin they do all kinds of stuff there and drums and everything. so they sent you here to network with a lot of these manufacturers that could bring opportunities into the store yes yes and okay. then and then also learn some education stuff because the NAM show has right. educational programs like I was watching one white when you messaged me earlier and said hey I'm over here and watching my client and I'm like okay I come over and I come check out yep. the client. Yep. Well, the other thing is like for, for me today, and this is something that I think would benefit you and your sponsor as well, is I'm going to an event at 3 o'clock. They have a music store that's teaching creative and unique ways to hold events at your music store. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm in. So that's what we'll go see that one at 3 o'clock. In fact, we've been talking about those kind yeah. of things, holding events. Yep. But doing things where people have to come into the store. Well, and I think too, is it's like I did a, an event with Bose not too long ago. I had been trying to get into Guitar Center. And I speak all over the country and there were Guitar Centers in all these different places. I wish your company was in more places. Oh, that'd be nice. Uh, yeah, but what happened was, as I said, look, if I can come in and host workshops, these parents will come in, tell me what you want me to, what microphone you want me talking on what speakers you want coming out and all the parents are there, they could come in and buy these things. So you guys should look into having open mics. Actually, we thought about that. <laughs> no, the, they're talking about, we're open trying to do mics, those are people that are playing, do we're open mics. Do, they want to have a rock band camp. Okay. And they're going to have there me you go. be a part of that. So that's pretty cool. No, I think that's great. I think anything you can do to get your consumer in the building, um, anything can become a venue. You know, it's like, so I, I would look into more stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, I love that with those words there. So, um, 
anything a word of advice on any listeners that are watching today on the music industry? Well, I mean, it's just educate yourself. You know, go out there, find the resources that can help you get closer to where it is that you want to go. There's a lot of free resources that are out there. There's a lot of great podcasts that are out there. And then once you find the people that that you kind of connect with, then go see what you can do to go deeper into their programs. And if somebody has something that you need to pay for, just make sure you've set your business up properly, write it off as the education piece of your business, but you don't have to do this alone. Too many people think that someone's gonna magically fix things for them. I had a guy reach out to me yesterday on Instagram, and he said, hey, I, I just released a new single, and uh, I, I haven't spent any money on marketing and promotion, but I'm wondering if I can send it to you and you tell me what I should do with it. I'm like, yeah, great, my, uh, my consulting rate's $300 an hour. And he's like, whoa, I'm sure it's probably worth it, but the only uh, the only thing that I can pay you with is like giving you half the song. And I'm like, that's where you're making the mistake, my friend. It's like, first he said he's got the summer hit of the summer. I'm like, then why are you putting it out in the summer? It should have been put out in February <laughs> to sure getting people excited about it. Uh, but it's like, just realize you don't know what you don't know and be okay with that. Uh, but don't sit around and, and be stupid. You know, it's like when you guys, if you're going to, let's say, do a Kickstarter campaign or a Pledge Music campaign, don't forget to put some of that money aside for marketing and promotion. You'd be surprised how many people just factor in the recording budget. Major labels don't do that, and that's who you're going up against. Smart, independent artists don't do that, and that's who you're going up against. So if you're going to be in the business, treat it like a business. Yes. Get something behind it. I totally agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because if it just sits there, it's only going to give a few hundred views, and that's good. If you're lucky, it'll get a few hundred views. Yeah. <laughs> Go to, I see a lot of YouTube videos that still have under 100, and they're a couple years old. So if they, it's up to you to find them, not up to them to find you. So that's what's great about having social media. Yeah. No, I got to think about 4K views on Facebook. I mean, Yes. With yoga pants. Yeah. 4K views with yoga pants. Yeah. It's only been, not even out for a year yet. Well, and the thing too is that 4K is a much bigger number than it used to be because it used to be YouTube was the only place you could see videos. So people would put up a video, get 100,000 views, 200,000 views. Now they're lucky if they get 10,000 because there's so many different places where people can actually see video. On, on Facebook, it's at 100K now. Right, that's perfect. There so you go. It's, it's right there at 100K, but sometimes the, the, the hard thing about Facebook I've noticed is you can't trust all those views. Yeah, I 10 mean... 10 second, 3 second views. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is that it's the start of the relationship, but if you have set yourself up properly, you can go back and you can target the people who watch 3 seconds and try to get them to watch 30 seconds the next time. And then target everybody who watched 30 and try to get them to a minute. And everybody who watched 100% of your video, get them to 3 minute video. There's so many different things that you can do trying to get them to go to your website. It's anywhere you take that, that you control. Get that yep. pixel put in right. Yep, that's right. All right, Rick. Well, well, thanks for uh, my pleasure. Uh, my pleasure. Video yeah, I appreciate you uh, taking the time. We finally got the Vivo to work. So That's right. That's perfect. We, we tried it on my phone many times. <laughs> <laughs> now we have a commercial for the iPhone 7. It works every time. No, just oh, kidding. man. All right, brother. S7's just not working. That's funny. All, All right, right. Well, let's go in and meet some folks. All right.